completely alone in a friend's mansion, consumed by paralyzing fear. Let's get into it. So, um, yeah, I was dog sitting for a friend. She had two, wait, yeah, two gigantic dogs, usually friendly. One of them did try to kill the other one while I was there, but that's not the story. That was actually pretty terrifying. And I called and she basically said, if it comes between you or them, let the other one kill the other. It was, it was a crazy thing. But anyways, that's not the story. The story is, um, <laughs> I was absolutely consumed with paralyzing fear while I was there um, because of this encounter. I agreed to watch the dogs for, I think, for like two weeks or something like that. It was like around Thanksgiving time or something. Uh, they went on a vacation and... I watched the two dogs and I had watched them before and I stayed in the house by myself it, it, not a mansion but it's a huge huge house lots of windows um, and to me it's a really big house and lots and lots of windows and I was completely alone in their house which I'd been there before but it was still like kind of a strange house because like I didn't really go into the other rooms until I slept there um, Sorry, my shirt went up. Night one. This particular one was so different than the other ones. Um, the other times, I was never really scared. There was like a few times where I was like kind of like a bit on edge, but it was like the holiday season and it was a really big house in a nice neighborhood and I was just like afraid of a home alone situation. Yeah, know what I mean? Except I'm not a child. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm sure that I'm just being paranoid. This time though was real, absolutely, paralyzing fear um i kept thinking that that i had went to bed the first night and i kept thinking somebody had gotten into the house and was on the main level walking around like and i felt like i had to be very very quiet very very still not make any sounds otherwise whoever got into the house would find me and get me and i was like this is completely ridiculous because the two dogs were in the basement and I'm like I know which was the floor down so like there's it was just the basement the main floor and then the top floor which the basement was completely finished um so it was a really really nice house and it was huge and so I was like okay so if somebody did come in the dogs would have made sound like I know like they're the a floor below but they still would have heard something going on and they would have been making a sound like it there's no one down there um because there was just so many windows like the patio doors there's two different sets of patio doors there was all the windows i was i and some of them didn't have curtains over them which freaked me out um and i think and i was like i locked all the doors i made sure they're all shut i made sure all the windows were shut all the curtains that i could shut i don't think anything had curtains actually i think there was like one or two windows that have blinds um, so I made sure everything was shut that could be shut. So like, I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, why, why do I feel like somebody's in here? Like, and I just shrugged it off and I was like, must feel like a, a like one of those situations where like, I'm paranoid. It's not really going to be like, no, but no burglars are waiting to get in the house. Like, it's fine. And so I tried to shrug it off. I think I, I might've fallen asleep for a few hours that night, but I was like pretty uneasy night two comes around and I'm like five times as terrified as the night before and I went to bed and this time the last time I like went to the bathroom I felt like I had to be really quiet and so I like went to the bathroom I did everything fast and like got into bed this time though I did everything I still had that feeling like somebody was down on the main level and I didn't know why I was like I didn't hear anything the dogs aren't barking I locked everything like I don't think anybody's here I checked everything before I went to bed and the like the feeling was so intense that like I hurried up and, and did my night routine got into bed and then it was so intense that not only when I got into bed did I feel like I had to be quiet like I felt like I could not move a muscle or I would be found 
and I was like, this is insane. And it felt like somebody was going to come in and attack me at any moment if I even breathed. So like I was laying in bed still, still as a board because I didn't want to be attacked. And I was like, this is ridiculous. And I had tried to turn on music or something because a lot of times like sound will like help calm me down. I, I was too afraid to even do that. I think the first night I did, but the second night I was too afraid to even do that because I was afraid that I was going to be found. I think I tried and then I was like, no, no, no I got to turn this off because like I was just so scared and I have never been so scared in my life and I don't really get scared like staying at people's houses so or like going other places. Like I travel by myself, like no big deal. Um, so, and I stayed by, I've stayed by myself. I lived in a house with seven other girls at one point, um, when I was late teens and I, there was a point where I was in there for like a week by myself and I was totally fine. Um, and that includes the day that they stole our air conditioners, the neighbors did, which is a whole nother story. I'll get into another time, but, um, <laughs> So this was so crazy, like that I felt so scared and I was like, I don't understand why I'm scared. And like, I know there's nobody there. And so I think maybe I, I maybe slept an hour or two. And the next day I went and I took a nap because I hadn't slept and I thought somebody came in the house. They did. <laughs> however, 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 it was the construction workers who were working on the bathroom because like the, they were remodeling their bathroom and they weren't finished on time or somehow it happened where they were there a couple of days that a few days two or three days that I was there and that I don't think it was originally meant to happen I don't remember but like they had come in because they had like needed to put the bill in there or something like that because they were done at that point and I didn't think there were anybody was coming back but they did because when I heard the what I thought I heard come in I was like no nobody came in I locked the doors blah 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 and then I know I didn't lock the door and I was like, oh shoot, I don't think I locked the front door, like blah, blah, blah. And I was freaked out. But then I heard the door close and I was like, wait, I think that was the construction. Cause I don't remember if they said something or if I went down and checked, I don't remember. It was the construction people though. Um, so I was like, okay, no, I lock door, lock door. Um, <laughs> that, that was, that was a bad idea. Um, and so then that night, I think at some point my cousin had come to visit me and she was there for like in a couple of hours and I was talking to her about how scared I felt like the last couple of nights and she and I she's like yeah it's weird I never feel scared because like she didn't live too far from where I was dog sitting and she's like I never feel I've never felt scared the entire time that we've lived here and I was like yeah it's super weird I don't know um she's like if you need to come stay over there you can I was like okay um because I could have stayed at my own house but it was like a 30 minute drive and so I didn't want to with having to take the dogs out first thing in the morning and last thing before I go to bed I didn't want to have to deal with the drive so I was like, no, no, I, it's fine. I, and, and I can just go home, like whatever. And so I went to bed that third night and the fear was so paralyzing, just like the night before. And then this time the wind was blowing. And so the trees were making shadows and sounds and it was a little bit extra. <laughs> so that didn't help anything, but I got so scared. Like I never go to my mom for comfort. Like she is not somebody she, there's, there's issues. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And so she is not somebody that I would ever call on for comfort that, that even has ever comforted me that I can remember. Um, like in fact, when I need comfort, she's the last person I go to because it's the exact opposite. But that night I was so freaking scared that I was like, I just want my mom. And I like never think that because like I said, she is not a source of comfort, never has been. And like, honestly, when I need comfort, like I want to go anywhere but my mom. So like <laughs> the fact that I was like, I just want my mommy. I was like, okay. So I called her because I was at that point, I had slept maybe two or three hours in three days. So I was just like desperate for some peace. And I was just like, this is, this is going to be a bad situation calling my mom. Like, this is only going to make things worse. Sure enough, that's what happened. Well, it didn't make things worse necessarily, but it did nothing. Um, and like, I thought she was not comforting and it was just, it was not, 
it was just as fruitless as I thought it would be. And I was like, this is insane. Like I need to get some sleep. And so I think tomorrow I'm going to have to sleep at home because I, I can't, I can't function like this anymore. So I was like, all right, today I'm going to like do whatever I need to. And then on tonight I'll go home, go to bed, come back early in the morning whatever, this is not an ideal situation. And then I thought about it and I was like, cause like every day I would go down, I would, I would, I would check before bed. And then I would check when I got up because I'm not checking in the middle of the night. Like why don't I'm in, when I'm going to be in bed? No, 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 I get not there. Mm -mm -mm. I had in the covers from the monsters. <laughs> so I don't know why we think that works. Cause it doesn't, but, uh, <laughs> so I was prepared to go home and I was like, this is not an ideal situation, it's super inconvenient, but I need sleep. <laughs> I can't function like this any longer. Like this is ridiculous. And I, then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? This, there's literally nothing here and the dogs aren't responding to anything going on. So I'm like, this must be a spiritual thing. Like it has to be like, there is some spirits roaming around here. Um, and this is what I'm feeling. Like it, this is not human. This is not like a regular thing because like, this is, I don't, I don't get scared. Usually it's, it's pretty rare for me to get scared. Um, uh, and to like, feel that way. to like, feel like, not only do I have to be quiet, which is ridiculous when you're in a house by yourself, except for the dogs, um, to, that I couldn't even move when I was in bed. Like I had to stay still. My side hurt so bad when I, when I did finally get up because I got up like right when the sun went up every time. Um, but like, I felt like I couldn't move. Like if I did, I felt I would get attacked or something. I don't know. It was weird. It was so weird. And so I was like, I need some sleep. I can't function like this anymore. So I'm gonna, so I've had a lot of experiences in the supernatural where I've, I've seen, I've seen the darkest of dark and I've seen the lightest of light, um, and everything in between. And it can be super, super overwhelming and draining and just the energy it takes out of you when you see all that stuff is incredible. So I've learned how to turn it on and off and um, I typically don't turn it on or ask for it to be turned. I don't like ask God to see anything because it, unless I feel like I'm going to be in danger or like really need to for some reason. Um, it took me a while to figure that out because and believe me like when I when I was getting into seeing all those things in the spirit realm in the first place it was so overwhelming and so energetically draining. And like, honestly, in my day to day life, there's a lot of times I feel so drained and I don't know why. And then I realize like, oh, either one, like I've been around a bunch of people with a whole bunch of stuff going on and cause I feel everybody's stuff too. Um, or two, like there's stuff going on in the spirit realm that needs to be taken care of. Typically if I'm at home, that's not really an issue. Um, if it is, I usually know about it. But anyways, so I realized this is in the spirit realm. I need to figure out what is going on because this isn't my house. And typically if I'm not in my own house, I don't clear out spirits because I'm like, this isn't my house. And when you do that, you actually cause things to happen to yourself and it can wreak havoc on your life. <laughs> so I don't typically do any of that in other places, just at my own home. Um, sometimes I like bind spirits so they don't like get to me, but like, I don't really clear them out. And this house though, I was like, I'm going to be here for the next week and a half. And while I'm here, I have authority. So I made a mistake. This was a mistake. I know this now. Um, but I was like, I need to see what's going on and how to fix this while I'm here. And she, and, and my friend was a Christian and I think her husband was too. Um, so I like felt comfortable doing that. And it didn't occur to me that like, eh, like maybe they had brought them in on purpose or liked them there or like anything like that. Nothing occurred. I have no, I don't, I don't know what was going on, but, um, like, I, and I still don't, uh, but I like none, none of that really occurred to me. I was just like, 
one, like, this is my friend's house and they need peace, and two, like, I need to be able to sleep, and while I'm here, I have authority, so this is completely ridiculous that I feel this scared. So I prayed, I was like, what is going on in this house that is making me feel so freaking scared? And all the demons I saw, I know people are probably gonna think I'm crazy, which is why I've never talked about it before, but like, every corner of the house everywhere there was so much activity going on and I was like no wonder I can't sleep and I did this piece by piece I did level by level um and prayed uh to see these normally like I said normally I don't pray to see them because it's too overwhelming to see everything all the time um but I was like I need to know what's going on what what's here and when I did it was infested and I was just like holy cow and it was every floor I didn't go through all of the rooms for one it wasn't my house and two like I, I didn't feel like it was appropriate for me to go through all the rooms so I just went through like all the levels the room that I was in which the room that I was in felt pretty safe like I felt like I was safe in that room like if I left that room I didn't feel safe in the middle of the night like during the day it was fine um but in the middle of the night, for some reason, I felt unsafe. And so I prayed over all three floors and <laughs> that was gross. And, um, every time, every floor that I did, the upstairs was the least, um, but the basement and the main floor were intense. And something that I've learned how to do is I don't always have energy to fight myself, especially if it's somebody else's place. Well, actually, especially if it's my own place, honestly, because then I have to deal with it more. But like, I don't always have energy to fight for it, fight for it, fight for it by myself. So I didn't. What I did was I prayed to see what was going on and where I was seeing the demonic activity. I was releasing angels to fight to get rid of it. Um, and so I would I went through the house and I did that. And then I released them throughout the whole property as well. And so I was like. I'm going to let that go for a few hours, do some, do, do whatever I need to. I don't want to see any more right now. Like closed it off, like opened it up to see what was going on, closed it off. Once I like did what I did, prayed over the house, released angels, all that stuff. Um, released protection over myself, all the, all the things. And I was like, I'll check back later. Uh, I think it was like a couple hours later. I like I was like, okay, do a check-in. I did like a really, really quick check-in because I still saw some a lot of warfare going on. I was like, it's a whole lot better, but there's still some warfare going on. So I left it go. And then a uh, few hours later, you know, I went about my business. A few hours later, I was like, okay, like, let me see what's going on. Is it cleared out? Am I going to be able to sleep here tonight? And I looked around and there was like still like a couple of things ha happening. But for the most part, it was pretty much all gone. Um, there was still some angels of protection there. There was, there was still a couple of angels like w in warfare, but like most of it was cleared out. It was, it was a safe space now. And that night I went to bed and I had zero fear, like before, like, I can't even, t like, I have never been so scared in my entire life. I don't, like, it's, it's unreal how scared I was. And, um, I don't think I was, like, making videos at the time. Or if I was, it was, like, just getting into it. But I wish I could have showed you, like, how scared I was. Because it was, it was a whole different kind of fear that I had never experienced before. It was super bizarre. And so then to, like, pray over the house and then be able to go to bed that night with zero fear whatsoever. Like I felt like I could move around freely. I felt like I could have left the door open while I slept. I don't think I did. Cause like, I just feel more comfortable closing the door cause it's darker. Um, but like, I felt, felt like I could have left the door open. Like I felt like I could like get in and out of bed, go to the bathroom when I needed to move around. I, there was so much peace and I felt amazing. And it was just like, that was bonkers to me. Like Cause like so much, so many times, like there's confirmations of things that have happened in the spirit realm, like this bridge that, can I say that on YouTube? Maybe I need to bleep that out. Um, that I didn't know, but I was like, I, we cannot go over that bridge and went around and found a friend and he told us this backstory and like the witchcraft that I was like, yeah, these animals are.
because they were sacrifices and that being confirmed and like just different things like just like the most bonker things that like have been confirmed which if you want to know the story of uh the bridge that I w didn't feel safe to cross um and the animal sacrifices how I knew or like how that all came about um let me know in the comments below I'll gladly share that story but like it wasn't something I had never been to that area before so I didn't know anything about it it was like, it was a school. We were picking up her friend from the school for some reason. I don't remember why. It wasn't even in the town that I live in. So it was like an hour and a half or two hours away, something like that. And we had to go meet her friend for some reason. I don't remember. And I just, I just went with her and like, I was like, we went clear around campus because I was like, I am not crossing that bridge. I feel absolutely unsafe, blah, blah, blah. And then as we went through, I was like, ooh, this doesn't feel good either over here because I feel like these are animal sacrifices for witchcraft. Dark magic, by the way. Um, and her friend confirmed both of those things without me even asking. He was like, when we walked through, he's like, this is what this is. And it was like, what? And then he's like, yeah, and that bridge over there, people go over there to, to unalive themselves. And I'm like, what? wait and and there's just been so many different things where like I remember one year in New York City I was praying for people on the streets it was a group of us it wasn't just me alone I'm, not, I'm nothing unsafe don't worry um but I was just praying for people like if they wanted pray if they want, didn't want prayer that's fine but like if you want prayer like pray for you like whatever um and this one guy I can't remember like sometimes I tell people things to the like prophesy or um psychic if you want to use like a more worldly worldly term um but like I, I've like told people things about themselves that like nobody else knew and like it's just like a really weird hard thing to describe but like this one guy I can't remember it's been a while now and I haven't really recalled the story for a while but like I had told him something about his family whatever and I gave him some encouragement as well and he's like, yeah, that's exactly it. And I think his wife had just died of cancer or something, which I didn't know that. I don't remember. Like, whatever I said was super accurate. And I would normally have been, like, absolutely not taking your money. Because he offered me money. He pulled out his wallet. I thought he was going to show me a picture of his wife that had just passed. Or, I can't remember what exactly the story was. But he pulled out his wallet and I thought he was going to show me a picture of his family member that had just passed or, or whatever we were talking about or I think she might have, she either had just passed or she was really, really sick with cancer. I don't remember. And he handed me money and I was normally not take it, but I really felt like somebody else that I was going to pray for needed it. So I was like, okay. And then, um, l later that day, somebody else I prayed for, I, I was, she was having a really hard time speaking, um, because she was overwhelmed with emotion. And I don't always take that as a, like, a oh, she must be so happy or I must be so right on because sometimes I know like if I'm overwhelmed with emotion, uh, it's not necessarily because it resonates. It's can be because it's so wrong or like whatever. So like, I don't just take it for, for whatever it is. I like make sure <laughs> how they're feeling and she was like she like gave me a big hug and was like thank you um but like because like she could barely choke words out and so like that I was like okay she she's resonating and I just felt so strongly like I needed to give her the money so I I was like I like I don't want to make judgments I don't want to I don't want to I don't want her to feel like I'm passing any judgment on her but I went ahead and gave it to her she started crying and was like, I didn't have money for food, but I need this for, she had some sort of health issue. She's like, I need to eat better because I have this health issue. Um, and so like now I can go eat. And I was just like, uh, wow. Um, I really, anyways, beside the point, I have stories. That's my point. I've got stories. If you want to know more about the New York stories, cause I, I had this kid who, he was probably high school, um, and his mom come by and pray, and he didn't want to at the first. They went, things changed completely. They came back, and he not only was so excited to see me again, he wanted, because we had these little bracelets that signified, like, the Jesus story, and he wanted, like, five of them or ten of them for his friends, and was so excited, and it changed his world, and, like, I've got, I've got stories from that. I've got stories the woman on the bridge in Scotland that wasn't actually there. <laughs> that, that's the only, no, I saw rats. Oh, oh, and the angels, the angels. 
Yeah, I prayed one night to see angels. I didn't see an angel. However, my the papers in my room started rustling around and I heard wind. I don't know how else to explain it besides wind. It was like this, like, you know how when you like swing a rope or something like round and round and round and round really fast how it goes. It's like that whirly sound, like, but it's like wind. But it's, it's not really wind, but it's like the, from the what you're doing. It's like that sound. Um, and when I heard the papers rustling, I was like, I changed my mind. I don't want to see angels. I don't want to see angels. <laughs> But I was sitting in the middle of the floor like this praying and then I heard the wind and I was like, I can't look up right now. I don't want to see the angel. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Um, and then I heard tapping on the window and I was like, I lived in a basement and so it was a big egress window. So it was like below the ground level, um, part of the window was and part of the window was ground level. Anyways, um, and I, when I heard the tapping, I was like, okay, I have to look up. What if, I hope nobody's in the window. Like I... I don't want to see an angel anymore. I hope it's not an angel. Like, I was, like, terrified. So terrified. I looked up and I saw rats. They weren't really there. I found out a few days uh, after seeing them three times, I found out. Um, but, which sounds like, I've never done drugs in my life. Just, just throwing that out there. So, but, like, there, there's just, like, and I know, like, not everybody's going to believe me and that's fine. I hope. <laughs> I'm trying to convince myself that's fine anyways. Um. But I've got stories that I can tell you, and I'll be telling you a few more, but, like, I'll be telling you more over the day, over the days to come, and I'm sure, and the, oh, yeah, the flashlights, I have, okay, so this direction over here is my living room, and then, like, right behind it, it's all open, is a kitchenette, and there's this wall here, like, there's a fridge that you can't see because this wall's here, but like, well, if I'm over here, like my bed's over here, um, and if I'm laying in my bed, I can see the living room, because it's all one big open space. I can see the living room, but I can't see the fridge. Uh, however, the flashlights, four different nights it turned on, um, and then these candles here, one of them, I don't remember which one, turned on once by itself no idea how that happened that one hasn't done it since and then there's another one that did it three times um and one of the times was caught on film because i happened to be telling the story going hi i think there's a ghost haha ha, blah like not i was telling it to instagram stories and i was just like i think there's a ghost like just like kind of joking because i was like this has happened twice now i actually watched was editing a video and saw that it had happened before i realized the other two times before i realized that it had happened, um, because I was like, oh, that's weird that this one light is on, turn, to turn them all on, whatever, didn't really think anything of it then, um, but I was like, ha, it's funny, it was a malfunction, like, whatever, but right as I was talking about it, I was like, I can't remember if it's this candle or this candle, and as soon as I was pointing, I can't remember if it was this candle or the one that it was turned on, I was not pointing to the right one, by the way, I think it was this one, um, I can't remember which one it was, I think it is this one or this one? I don't remember. And I was just like, I cried. <laughs> because I was like, even if that was a malfunction, that was super weird timing. Like, how does that happen? And I was like, no one is going to believe me because like, how is that believable? But it happened right on here. It was super weird. Um, But like, oh my gosh, it was so weird. So anyways, I've got... I've got so many stories and I'm sure, and I've seen possessions. I've seen, I've seen, like I said, I've seen the lightest of light, darkest of darks. And, um, did I, I finished that story, right? And, but the, but yeah, like after I had prayed all this stuff out of the house, I peace every single night. I slept like a baby every single night, like eight hours. Cause before I could maybe fall asleep for an hour or two and then I'd have to get up and then I could, I think it was four days in. Because the first night, I don't think I felt that on edge, but this, but it, like, kept getting worse and worse and worse. And, um, but, oh, what was I gonna, I don't know what I, I was on tangent, but anyways, so, by the end, I, I, the rest of the time that I was there, the first four nights, I think, were uneasy, but the rest of the time that I was there, complete peace, it was, like, a week and a half, almost, I think, that I was there, 
complete peace, slept like a baby, like eight hours, no problem sleeping. Before I would sleep maybe an hour or two those other four nights. Um, and then I would try to take a nap during the day and I would sleep like an hour or two. And it was just, I slept a lot better during the day than I did at night. Uh, I don't even know. I don't even think I ever slept two, two hours those first few nights. It was insane. But, um, like it's just, it's really crazy. Cause like, oh yeah. And the time the witch tried to kill me, <laughs> I mean, unalive me, I think I'm going to have to bleep some things in this video, huh? But, um, anyways, I've got stories if you want to hear them. <laughs> and, um, hopefully this one was encouraging because we, Jesus, oh, it's cinematic. I forgot, but Jesus saved my life. Um, and I believe in the power of Jesus and we have, that means that we have authority over the demons and angels and if a demon's trying to get you you can have authority over it uh, yes you have to learn how to tap in and you have to learn what your gifts are and you have to learn how to use them it's their tools but they're there <laughs> um and yeah if you have questions let me know i would love to do more videos like this i haven't done a lot i want to i want to start talking about this more and more because I've had I've had a lot of experiences. But for today, that is all. I love you. Drew big, take action. Bye!